Hey everyone, earlier this week Tailwind Labs team released a big update to their headless UI component library and with that came the highly anticipated support for React out of the box within their Tailwind UI uh, collection of components. Now if you're not aware, uh, prior to this update, Tailwind UI would provide you with the uh, HTML and the Tailwind CSS classes that you would have to use. So you'd get the layout and the structure, but any functionality you would have to implement that on your own. So any extra JavaScript that would be required, uh, you'd have to do that uh, yourself. So things like accessibility, uh, interaction, uh, you know, animations and stuff like that, even though they provide you the specs of what uh, is recommended, but to actually implement that and use it in your React application, you would have to do that yourself. And I actually did a video earlier on exactly how to do that for a slide over component in Tailwind UI. So I wanted to make this video to check out the differences and see exactly how it compares to what we had built out earlier. And I'll link to that video in the description below. But for now, let's jump in and check this out. So if you haven't seen my previous video, a quick recap of what we're building. Let's say we have a page here with a button and when we click on the button, we have a panel that slides over here. So this slide over component uh, is what's provided by the Tailwind UI. Uh, but if you recall how I mentioned before that prior to this big update, all you would get is the HTML and the Tailwind CSS classes to use, but things like animations uh, and any interaction within the component, you'd have to implement that yourself. So even though the specs are all provided here, you know, these are the uh, transition properties and stuff like that, but the actual JavaScript, you would have to write that yourself. And that's what we did in our little example here. So as you can see, when I click on the button, it opens and had that nice animation with the, uh, with the slide in. Uh, when I click on the background here, it goes, uh, goes back to the main page you Can also interact with the keyboard. So when I open it up, I can tab through and notice how the focus stays within the slide over components. So, uh, this is called focus trapping. And, um, again, this is something that you would have to implement yourself. Uh, and same with pressing on the escape keyboard, uh, takes you back to the page and also restores the focus to this uh, original button here as well All right so that's quite a bit of stuff they have to implement on your own um, and for this we used uh, a number of extra libraries to help us out for accessibility we have the react aria here and you'll notice we have uh, a number of components and hooks that we use to implement some of this uh, functionality and then we also used framer motion for the animations so again this is just to help out with the um, with a nice implementation of it and again i'll post the links to the previous video below if you want to check out the details of how uh, this was implemented but you'll see there's quite a bit of code here right so even though um even though the layout is provided for us everything else we had to still implement well with this recent update we no longer have to do all of that ourselves and we finally have out-of-the-box support for react so if we go back to the Tailwind UI documentation, we'll see that now we have an option for React and Vue as well. And if we take a look at the React component, you'll see that the entire component is provided to us. So we no longer need to write all of this ourselves. We can just simply copy what we have here. And you'll notice that it's using the headless UI React component library to help out with this. If you haven't heard of headless UI, it's a collection of fully accessible uh, components for your application that are unstyled and they're meant to be used alongside Tailwind CSS. So now Tailwind UI takes the uh, HTML and the CSS that it provided before and combines it with the headless UI library to provide fully implemented React components to us. So things like accessibility and the animations and the interactivity of the components, it's already out of the box. Okay, so let's go ahead and add this to our example and see how exactly it compares to what we already built. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is install a couple of these extra dependencies. So we'll need to install headless UI as well as the hero icons um, icon package. So I'm just gonna go back to our example here and npm install these two packages. Okay, next let's go back to the slide over documentation. If we go over here, 
Uh, and I mentioned this in my previous video, but Tailwind UI is a paid component library, but they do provide some free examples. So in both of my videos, I am using just the free sample that they provide. All right, so let's go ahead and select React and go into back into the code. And let's just copy all of that. And if we go back to our app, I'm just gonna add a new component here and I'll call it headless light over and just paste all of that in here. Okay, let's make this a little bit smaller. All right, now you'll see we're importing the dialogue and the transition components from headless UI and then also the, um, the close icon from hero icons. Uh, that we'll be using as well. Okay, and next let's uh, rename this to Headless Slide Over. And you'll notice that they provide the uh, the state hook in here. We're actually going to put this outside of our component and provide to it uh, just so we follow the similar pattern to our existing implementation. Right, so I'm going to follow a similar pattern in the new component as well. So if we go back and I'm just going to use the same names. So open and set open and I'm just destructuring them right uh, in here just for simplicity sake now there's a couple more things that we're gonna need so if you'll notice down here we have a title so let's update that you take in a title from the props just like in the other component and the last thing is over here if you'll notice they tell you where to put your content so Instead of this, we're going to have children. All right, so now it follows the a similar pattern to the slide over component that we built earlier. Okay. The title and children. Now we just need to add these here. Like so. And we can now get rid of this. And we don't need use state anymore. All right, so that's it for this slide over component itself. Let's save that. And now if we go back to our uh, main page over here. So you see how we had a button that would trigger the slide over to open. And then we have the slide over itself down here. So I'm going to do the same thing with the new one. And I'll leave them both on the page just so we can compare. All right, and then we're going to rename this to headless slide over okay, and we'll, we'll import that in a second. And you'll notice that the props that we're using are named differently just so that we, uh, you know, don't have to change any of the stuff that was provided by Tailwind UI. So this should be called open and this should be called set open. Now title can stay the same. Uh, and over here, we need to implement the state ourselves. So just like we have over here, we'll just rename this to open and set open. And we just need to update that over here as well. So open and set open. Now, last thing is we need to import the new component. So import headless slide over from headless slide over. Oops. And the last thing is we also need another button. So let's say click me again. Now we need to change this to set open. And that should be it. Okay, so now let's run the application and go back to over here. Okay, now I did a little mistake here. So this should be component slash headless slide over. But if we go to our page over here, well, first of all, let's add a little bit of a margin there. That's better. Okay. So again, the our previous slide over that we had. 
Okay, and now let's check out the new one. Wow, it looks exactly the same. And okay, now if we check out the key button interaction, I press and tab through, you'll see the focus is trapped. And when I press escape, and it goes back to the page. Now, one last thing we want to check is the accessibility properties. And just like I did in the other video, uh, you'll notice that when we open the slide over, the content that's visible to the screen readers changes to this dialogue element over here. Uh, and you'll notice none of the other content that's on the page is visible to the screeners. So we um, that's very important to have uh, for accessibility. So let's check out if the new one achieves the same thing. Okay, now let's check out the Tailwind UI slide over. And you'll notice that we have dialogue here as well. The structure of these sections is slightly different, but that's okay as the content is still not visible to the screen reader. So the only thing that's visible is the dialogue, which is what we want. So that'll be it for today's video. As you can see, that was super simple to start using and get up and running in almost no time compared to having to build all of this out on our own, which, you know, it takes a little bit of effort. So I'm really excited about this update. Um, I am definitely going to be using some of these in my own projects and recommend for you guys to check them out as well. Um, but that'll be it for today and I'll catch you in the next one.